Hebrews chapter 10. He then went on to say, Behold, here I am coming to do your will. Sorry. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9. Here I am. I mean, I read it so many times. I thought everyone would quote, quote it with me. So, here I am. I am coming to do your will. Right? Thus he does away with and annuls the first former order, that is the law of Moses, the prophets, so that is the oblations, the sacrifices, that's the temple, animal sacrifices. Okay. As a means of expiating sin. So he sorted out sin once for all in the body of his flesh. So that he might inaugurate and establish a second latter order. So he did the will of God. He got rid of the old temporary covenant. And he established a new, permanent, abiding one. And that new one is the spirit living on the inside of us. Right. And in accordance with this will of God, we have been made holy, consecrated, and sanctified through the offering made once for all of the body of Jesus Christ. So according to this will, he did the will. According to this will, you have been made holy. So this is past tense. It's once for all. You cannot add to it. You cannot take away from it. It is something that he did, and it is how it is. So by his sacrifice, you have been made holy. Right? Who is the you? Is the ones that believe and receive the sacrifice. You can take it to Romans chapter 8. Over all who accept that sacrifice. Right. So, I mean, the Bible is so clear. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So to whosoever what? Believe. Believes. Not whosoever tries to do everything to fulfill the law. The law is now fulfilled. Whosoever believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. Right. So he did it. It's a once for all sacrifice. According to this will of God, we have been made holy. Consecrated or sanctified. That's what the word made holy means to be Set apart. So you consecrate it. Sanctified. Right? So, through the offering made once for all of the body of Jesus Christ. So there's something that he did. And all of this happens by the Holy Spirit. Remember Galatians chapter 3? Oh, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Unto whom before your very eyes Jesus Christ was openly set forth and portrayed as crucified. So there was a preaching, there was a revealing of this world. This will is how Jesus offered his own flesh body, holy, blameless, perfect sacrifice, once for all for the sin of the world. Yes. Okay? He says, did you receive the Holy Spirit by doing the works of the law, or was it by hearing this? So you heard a message of the gospel, of the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice. And that entered into you, 
in the form of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Word of God that is alive and active. That's the double-edged sword. Because the, the Word is God. The Word was God. The Word is God. So as you hear the living Word of God, that Word enters you. What enters you? The Spirit. Because the Word says Jesus, John 6, 63, are Spirit and life. Okay? So the Holy Spirit comes when we believe the Word. Are you with me? So what does the Holy Spirit do? He makes you holy. So the Holy Spirit is the only holy thing about you. The Holy Spirit is what's make you, making you holy. You are consecrated and sanctified because you believe that you have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You believe that His blood, His body, His sacrifice is what sets you apart for God's use. So that's, that's the thing that I want to lift out now is being set apart means for a purpose. So being set apart is simply this. You are set aside for certain things so that you cannot now anymore do other things. All right? So this whole thing that, the, that God did and that you received when you received the Holy Spirit, when you believed the gospel, all of that, this places you in a certain position with God. Okay, so John Bevere uh, explains it like this. He says he takes marriage as, as, you know, as an example. All right? So, this is my wife. So, whether she does certain things or not, she's my wife. Yeah. We got married. I am her husband. So, positionally, she's my wife. Yeah. But since she, got my, she became my wife, there's certain actions, her life changed, my life changed. Yeah. There's certain actions that now, everything is now different because we are now together. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, which means there's, we, we're not going to now go just randomly, you know, doing things without one another. We're not going to pursue other relationships. We're not going to pursue other romantic relationships. Okay? So, so now there's an expression of the position that flows out in our actions. But it, it, the position has to happen first. Yes. Without this positioning, we cannot give expression to it. Yeah. Yes. I cannot give expression to a relationship or the position of being married with her without being married. Yeah. If I care about the will of God. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yes. Which means... Now that we are married and in a certain position towards one another, now we do not give expression to other things. We express what we now have become in our position, also in our actions, in our habits. And there are certain things that change us immediately, but that's mostly happening in the position. And then over time we realize, okay, yeah, that wasn't the way I should have responded. That wasn't the way I... So then we pursue relationship. We pursue how to express this relationship better and clearer. Okay? So that means the um, behavior changes because of the position. Does it make sense? Okay. All right. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> Verse 14. So this is the same letter. So if you place emphasis on Hebrews chapter 10, you need to keep on reading until you get to Hebrews chapter 12. Okay. Verse 14. Strive to live in peace 
with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no one will ever see the Lord. Okay? Verse 14, King James, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So he says, now we got the position, but now we need to pursue the holiness that we already got through faith in the cross. Which means in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions, we need to get the behavior side of stuff aligned with the position. And God is gracious and compassionate and slow to anger and is rich in love. When he speaks, listen. Hear. And when he speaks loudly, hear even quicker. Verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 12. Have you completely forgotten the divine word of appeal and encouragement in which you are reasoned with and addressed the sons? So who is he addressing? Is he addressing people under the law? No. Is he addressing born-again people? Yes. Because he's addressing who? Sons. Okay. My son, do not think lightly or scorn to submit to the correction and discipline of the Lord. So when you start touching on sonship and in your real identity and you start st taking steps towards maturity in the Spirit of God, don't be so surprised when the Holy Spirit starts correcting you. Okay? So for the baby that just got born again, man, I mean they get gloriously saved and psh, wow, and wow. And then the Holy Spirit starts nudging them saying, okay, listen, Usually, first thing, get baptized, okay? <laughs> then the second thing, control your tongue. Yeah. And then the, the, the next thing, hey, get your thoughts in line with God. Yeah. You know? And then so, suddenly, you know, you don't sin as lucky as you sinned before. <laughs> you know? So all the stuff that you enjoyed while you were a sinner, you, it, it's not so nice anymore. You know, you, it spoiled it all. So you just feel like you did some things like, oh, then you feel in your heart, hey, your conscience doesn't allow it anymore. Yes. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is finding expression in your conscience. Amen. And you just realize this is not aligning with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. So sometimes you just feel, no, I, no, this isn't it. And most of the time he speaks to you before the time. Yeah. So which means, listen, listen. Okay, But if you haven't, then you realize, oh, th I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. My conscience doesn't allow it anymore. It doesn't mean you're condemned. Yeah. It doesn't mean, you know, God is angry at you. He addresses you as a son. Yeah. And he's saying, son, don't scorn to submit to the correction. Yes. So if that correction comes to your conscience, say, Lord, I take the correction. Give me your spirit. Help me to walk in your way. Okay? And then every time something comes up, you resist, the, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, so what did Jesus do? He was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Okay, so here he is now in the wilderness. The devil comes. And he's trying to allure him. So if something is alluring, that's already a sign to you. Yeah. Okay? So now the devil is trying to allure him. I mean, if you just bow your knee, I will give you all these nations. Sure. Yeah. Hey, you will worship the Lord your God alone. Yeah. You know, you will not tempt the Lord your God. Just, you know, jump from this thing, you know. Angels will catch you. So, just command these stones to become bread. Yeah. Says, 
man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So every time he answers him with the scriptures. He answers him with the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. And then he returned. So he was tempted. And every time the temptation came, he answered with scripture. He says, no, I am now taking a definite step away from this thing, even though it's a temptation. This is not what the word says. This is not what the spirit has for me. This is not what God in my conscience allows. So sorry, devil, even though my flesh wants to be gone. Okay? So start every time you take, take a step in obedience to the spirit, away from what the temptation wants to draw you into, allure you into. Okay? Should you miss it, hey, First John chapter 1 and chapter 2. Actually, 1 John chapter 2 verse 1 says, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous. So you didn't blow it all together, but it's not a nice thing. So if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father, and he's interceding, he's pleading for you with a perfect sacrifice by the will of God that he made for all your sin for all time before you were even born. All right, but now he wants to manifest something. This holiness is not manifested, it's spirit. This is manifestation. And God is not going to do it, you're going to do it. Okay? How, am I, how can you say God is not going to do it? Okay, the holiness that comes is God. But he needs you to surrender so that he can come to the front. So this is what resistance to temptation is. You just surrender every time to what the Spirit says. You surrender every time to what the Spirit If there is some kind of a tension, if there's some kind of a, you know, like a, uh, is it tow truck, what's it in English? Like a tug of war, thanks. If there's a tug of war, something pulling, something pulling, hey, just surrender. He can pull stronger than you can. So say what God says. Meditate on his word. But now there's certain things that only you can do. God is not going to make a decision for you. God is not going to believe for you. You need to believe. You need to speak. And you need to take certain actions. But you can take that action by the Holy Spirit on inside you that you give expression to you. He's the power behind it. So you're not doing it in your own strength. You're doing it with Him, in fellowship with Him. You're doing it because you value your relationship with Him more than your relationship with fulfilling the own, your own pleasures of your own flesh. So anything that draws you away where your conscience is uh-uh. Do you, do you want to hear his voice even clearer, even more? I'm sure all of you do. Then when he speaks, listen. Yes. Take a step. Yeah. Next time it's clearer. Yes. And you take a step. Next time it's clearer. And you take a step. Yeah. All right? But the closer you step to this side, the more difficult it becomes to say no. Yeah. Then you, you start to, you know... You open up things that takes, takes you a while to get rid of. So, because now you start engaging the desires of the flesh, which is really strong, with certain things, and you just get sucked in deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And any time you can turn to Jesus. But listen, we're talking about manifestation. You, your position is safe. Your position is safe in Him. Now, the, the question is, is your heart surrendered to him? So the pursuit is in the relationship. The pursuit is in giving expression to this holiness. So what does holiness mean? Set apart for a purpose. Right? So I think one example that I used years ago, even in the library, if you take a cup 
and you put it in the millimill. These big bags of pop meal, you know, for those who like pop. You put the cup in the pop, <laughs> in the meal. <laughs> and now you say to everyone, leave this cup, this is the milli meal cup. Yeah. Right? It's now consecrated for a purpose. Now it's not used to scoop soil in the garden when you go planting something. No, I mean, there's tools for that, but just for argument's sake. It's not used for the dog food. That's a, actually a good example because I got a little uh, stainless steel bowl that remains in the dog food. It was actually, years ago I had cats, it was the cat's food bowl. <laughs> now I use it to scoop the dog's food. Okay. But it's there. It's not used for anything else. It remains in the bag. It's consecrated for the purpose. So now, if someone takes the the cup and you know goes to pick up the dog poop with it which is an inappropriate use of that thing it doesn't mean that that thing can never be used for its purpose anymore you could just rinse it and you put it back where it belongs because I said it should be here so you insist on what God said about you what is your purpose what is your calling? So if you've messed it, if you've messed up, yeah. as soon as possible, get back to what God said. Yeah. How do you do it? You stand on your position in God and you agree with Him. Because if you're now going to agree with the plan of the devil to get you into shame and guilt and agree with that and keep on holding on to that shame and guilt you're not going to get back to your position. You're going to lose years. Okay? So, the blood of Jesus is the sacrifice that shall avail for all time. It remains in place. And your sin remains atoned for. But now in expression, in manifestation. This, we are in a new position. So there's certain things that we now need to stop pursuing. And instead of it, we need to start pursuing Him. And what it is that He has called us for. And that's where the joy is. That's where the fulfillment is. That's where the power is. Okay, so back to Jesus in the wilderness. After He was tempted of the devil, and He spoke the word of the Lord, and the devil departed from him. He came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. Was the Holy Spirit less powerful before he came? No. But now the Holy Spirit has found manifestation and expression because in the midst of the choices, Jesus chose him Surrender to him which manifests him more. Surrendering to him which manifests him more. So the power of God is going to manifest when you live in the will of God, the blood of Jesus, which is your sanctification. So how does the process of sanctification work? You deny the flesh. You deny certain things. You actively deny it, and you actively pursue Him. And then, when something comes up, you deny it again, and you actively pursue Him. Okay? So, blessed is the man who walks not after the counsel of the ungodly. Psalm chapter 1. His delight is in the law of the Lord, or the word of, word of the Lord. And he... Uh, you know, he doesn't sit in the circles of the, the scorners or walk in the, in the ways of the sinners. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the living water. Listen, you can't have both. You've got to choose. So you can't take the message of the cross of the gospel of Jesus Christ, this wonderful, powerful grace that he's given us to give expression to him 
and use it to justify giving expression to the devil. You're either going to serve the devil or you're going to serve Jesus. And we can serve, run after the devil with all our lives, with all our strength, with all our heart, with everything, even in our position of being made holy. Listen, the question is, do you believe you are holy? Or do you believe that you're a sinner? Do you agree with this temptation coming in? Or do you agree with God's calling on your life? If God's given you a calling and a gifting, somewhere you've got to take it. If God has given you a certain position in the body, somewhere you've got to put it on. Somewhere you've got to agree with the Spirit of God. So if God says to you, okay, I, for instance, you know, this is something that, that we hear, a lot of people get this kind of word. I've called you as a prophet to the nations. You know, as Jer- out of Jeremiah. Okay, now the prophet comes. You know, he comes to Christ's life ministries and the place is packed because the prophet is here. <laughs> so now the prophet prophesies and he calls out someone, hey, there's a calling in your life. God calls you as a prophet to the nations. Yeah. No, I, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a prophet. Or you can respond like this. Yes, Lord, okay. So, Lord, how am I going to teach me, teach me, teach me? I don't know. How am I going to do this? How does this work? So now you start building yourself up in the Word. You took the Word. You took the position. Okay, Lord. Okay, I see this is where I'm going. I don't know how. Help me. Now you start to look in the Word. So now you take the consecration. He consecrated you for a purpose. He consecrated you to be a voice to the nations. So are you moving towards it or moving away from it? And sometimes, you know, we're like Jonah, running away. Where we should be going to, to Nineveh, we just get the ship and we go to Tarshish. And then the, the storms come and we think, what? What? And then the storm is there. And we say, okay, people, it's me. Let me, throw me, throw me over. The fish comes and, you know. So the whole story, and then afterwards, imagine now, someone coming, he was just in the belly of a whale for three days, and he's coming to your city to preach, you would believe also, you know? <laughs> imagine what he looked like coming up out of the whale's belly. Okay, so you get people running away from their calling. You get that so many times. I mean, just the other day, we had Chris here from Canada, so... He just, he just said, I mean, so many years he said, oh, I don't know, I, I, and he tried to kind of run away from it, but then he just decided to go for it. And then God gave him such an awesome ministry. I mean, he's got these big crusades on his farm called It Is Time, and they're preparing for it and for another one now. I mean, thousands of people come, and it's just awesome. I mean, he's in a remote area of Canada in the north, you know, where it's really cold. So, I mean, he's, and, and just now God said to them, okay, start, start a church in the town, and he did it. I mean, and there's already like 40, 50 people in every service, and this has only go, been going a couple of weeks. I think that's amazing. So, now, when you respond to God's call, now you respond it, he sanctified you for a purpose. He say, yes, Lord, I believe I take it. What happens? Favor. As you respond, the favor comes. So now the favor starts working things out. So because you listen to the Spirit of God and you want to move forward, and most of the time the stuff that the Spirit prompts you to do is ludicrous to the mind of the flesh. It's impossible. It's like, no, it can't work. But then you take that step and you see the favor. I mean, if I can just take this building and as, as an example again. So in, when was it? December 2020. Linda and I sat there in Stillby. We said, okay, what do we want this year? We said, okay, we want a church and we want a house. 
how we loved. We don't know how. <laughs> so, but Lord, this is what we want. Within 2021, the plans for this thing started coming up. I mean, the, the doors just opened after the lockdowns and our own doors started opening after I was sick with COVID myself. I mean, just a few months after I got, I got better from COVID, we started talking to the people about this building. I mean, it's just crazy. So, um, and everything just happened and here we are. And we got a church and we got a house. All right? So God breathed his favor on us. He, he, he gave his favor in the situation because we responded to his call. We responded in obedience to do something that looks like it's going to destroy us. <laughs> okay? So, and when something happens where, you know, when the devil tries to steal the dream, you just kick him, you don't listen. You don't start to, you don't start to say certain things like in agreement with the reality. Now it's not a time to say, oh, they're going to take our house. We're going to lose the church. We're not going to lose the church. We're not going to take. So sometimes when stuff happens against what God has called you into, it's just the devil trying to distract you. What you do is you assert the position. So when the temptation comes, that's not what I'm called for. I'm asserting my position in Christ, giving expression to him in me. No. And we say, yes, Lord. You know that song, we say, yes, Lord. We willingly come, you know. So it's about every time you give expression to the will of God. I mean, you, you make the hordes of hell like so despondent and they feel so, you know, how can I put it? They, they feel insecure. We're never going to get this guy to, to bow his knee to us, you know. And then after a while, if you're just persistent in standing with what God said, they will leave you alone. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay? All right. So if we take that to prayer, sometimes we pray and we get an answer. And this is something I heard from Andrew Womack, man. We've been listening to Andrew Womack's prayer messages and stuff. Ah, it's awesome. It's great. All right. So he said, close to the end of the series, he said this. He said that God answers you every time yeah. you pray. Amen. Yeah. Listen, God is not deaf. Yes. God hears you and he answers you. Why don't we see the manifestation of it so quickly? Because there's a process for the stuff to manifest and people are involved. And people are not perfect. Yeah. And people don't always hear. But when you get the prompting from the Spirit of God, and you obey, suddenly you become the answer to someone else's prayer. Isn't that amazing? So, there's certain things that we can build into our lives. If the Holy Spirit says, Watch your tongue, say this, say this, say this. If the Holy Spirit prompts you to pray for a certain thing, believe that you receive it and you will get it. So now when you pray, it's like it's, there's no other option. This is what's going to happen. And you just keep on saying that. Yes. By doing that, you assert the will of God and you bring into the scene what was in the unseen by faith. So sometimes, and he used the example, uh, uh, Andrew used this example. In the book of Daniel, there's these two prayers. In the one he prayed, and it's three minutes, the angel's there. How's that? Here I am with your answer to prayer. He said, when you started praying, you know, I, God sent me when you started praying. Now, the prayer, if you read it through, is about three minutes. 
So it took as long as from the start to the finish of the prayer for the angel to be there. But then later he prayed, 21 days later. Prayed, 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 prayed. Luckily, Daniel didn't stop praying. He just prayed, prayed, prayed. Here's the angel. He said, God immediately sent me. But there's certain things that I had to put in place first. And I, he had to, you know, speak to the prince of Persia and, you know, and do this and this. Okay, so... Delay doesn't mean God didn't hear you. Delay doesn't mean God didn't answer you. Keep on praying and keep on speaking in accordance with the will of God. Okay? So it doesn't always mean everything has to manifest immediately. You are involved in the manifestation. So this is something, you know... We, we need to get, we are manifesting machines. Yes. And the software is faith. Yes. And if the software gets corrupted, the machine doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that means we need to get our minds in order. We get a, need to get our tongues in order. There's certain things that needs to be in alignment with God. And if it's not, God will speak to you. Yes. Do not despise the correction. Take the correction. But when, now, now the, the correction is over. Now you stay on that course. Because it's too costly not to. You lose time mostly. But also, there's certain glorious, wonderful things that God wanted to do. There's certain things that people have been praying for for years, yeah. for years, for decades. Yeah. And, I mean, when we got here, there's this group of people, they're praying here on the mountain. They said, hey, man, we've been praying for this to, to happen, and here you are. They were so blessed with the testimony. All right? So there's people praying and praying and praying. And now God gets someone to respond, and then, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> now they keep on praying. Now God has to speak to someone else. Come on, would you do it? Would you do it? So, so what is the cost of disobedience? Well, somewhere you get to someone and you see they're standing in the vision that God gave you. All right? God's purposes need to be fulfilled. So sanctification simply means this. I'm fit for a purpose. I've been washed. I've been cleansed. He qualified me. He gave me himself to dwell on the inside of me so that he can give expression to the divine nature yeah. all right so uh, let's get in line with god yeah. so everything that's not not in alignment with who god is those things need to just take the first exit yeah. yes. and it's only you that can tell it to do it yeah. all right so the notion that says, okay, oh, I can do it this grace. <laughs> you, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Because you are delaying the manifestation of the blessing in your own life yeah. by doing those things. Yes. It destroys destiny. Yeah. It destroys callings. But now imagine if we meditate on the word. Imagine if we speak the word. Imagine if we're promptly obedient when the Spirit of God speaks. What will be possible? What can God do through your life? Now you're, you start to imagine with a sanctified imagination. And your imagination becomes the screen onto which God projects vision. And you start to imagine things that you see is in alignment with His Word. Man, if there's anything in this Word, I want it. So if there's anything that the Word says we can have... You can imagine yourself doing it. You can imagine yourself lifting up the people out of the wheelchair. You can imagine yourself prophesying. You can imagine, imagine it. It's in, in accordance with the will of God. I guarantee you, it's not the devil giving you a desire to prophesy the word of the Lord. It's not the devil giving you a desire <laughs> to heal the sick, to cast out devils. It's, that's, that's the spirit. All right. Okay. All right. So I, I believe the point came over. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you that you have a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. Show us where we're not in alignment with your truth, with your will, with your plan for us. Lord, we want to quickly, as quick as possible, get exactly in alignment with you and get all other things out of the way. We pray that you impart by your Spirit all the gifting, all the power and the authority that we need to stand in what you called us for. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's just make a few pronouncements. Okay, just say, I have been made holy. I have been forgiven. I have been set apart for God's purpose. Therefore, nothing but the Word of God, nothing but God's will for my life is allowed in my life anymore. I follow the Spirit. I follow His voice. And by His mercy, by His grace, by His power, I will walk in His purposes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So um, I'm just going to end the service. For those who still want ministry, you can come to the front. And then there's nice soup and bread for everybody. So be blessed. We love you. Thank you for watching, everybody. Amen.